and we will finish with this one inshallah ta'ala and this is that la ilaha illallah this is hadith number 11 uh, that la ilaha illallah is the best by which a person seeks aid from Allah in times of difficulty in times of hardship from Umm Salama radiyallahu anha qalat istaykada nabi min al-layli wa huwa yaqul la ilaha illa Allah madha anzala al-laylatu min al-fitan madha unzila al-laylatu min al-fitan madha unzila min al-khazain so he says uh, in the hadith that from Umm Salama who said radiyallahu anha that the messenger of Rasulullah, he woke up one night, he woke up, and he said, La ilaha illallah, what tribulations have descended this night? And what treasures have descended this night? The one who will go out and waken the people from their apartments. How many people there are? Kam min kasiyatin fi dunya, ariyatun yawm al qiyamah. How many people are clothed in this life, yet they will be naked in the hereafter? So in this hadith, Ruwah al-Bukhari, al -Bukhari, there are a number of things in this hadith, important things. First of all, this hadith indicates the excellence of La ilaha illallah, in the sense that whenever there are hardships and calamities which descend, that a person says La ilaha illallah, as the messenger of Allah, he, he said, because... He perceived the descending of calamities. And when these affairs, when there are great and mighty affairs, so to say, La ilaha illallah. Secondly, we see that the Messenger of Allah, he informed about tribulations descending and coming, and plenty of tribulations. Thirdly, we see in this hadith an encouragement for the people to perform qiyam and to strive in worship during the night. Fourthly, we see that, the, that in this um, hadith, the messenger of Islam, he ordered his family and others to go out to make salah, to pray, and to increase in ibadah, and to encourage them in praying. Following the example of Ismail, alayhi salam, um, in which we say, uh, which we see in the Quran, وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ that he used to command his family with prayer and with charity, with zakah. And he was pleased, he was one who Allah was pleased with him. He was pleased with his, his Lord was pleased with him. So that's the fourth benefit. The fifth benefit is that um, we find that in this hadith is an indication of the women being advised not to uh, to make tabarruj, meaning to make a display, to make a display. And so we know that we see another hadith. There are two groups from my from the there are two groups from the people of the hellfire which I have never seen, which I have not yet seen. And they are and he mentioned amongst them women who are clothed but they are naked until the end of the hadith. So at the end of that first hadith that we mentioned, كَمْ مِنْ كَاسِيَةٍ فِي الدُّنْيَا عَارِيَةٌ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامِ An indication of absence of tabarruj for women. Now there is in this uh, hadith a very very important lesson, a tremendous lesson. We finish with this inshallah ta'ala. And this hadith as you can clearly see, it shows saying لا إله إلا الله in times of hardships and calamities. And the best example of that in the Quran is the example is the example of Yunus alayhi salam when we see as, as is mentioned in the Quran where he fled from his people he was ordered uh, to call them and he was anticipating that the punishment might, might come upon them but he left angry and as we see in the Quran with noon mughadiban mentions here about Dhunnun, which is Yunus alayhi salam. 
when he went, he left angry and he thought that we would not you know, have, have power over him. And then the st as the story goes that he went on a ship and then he was tossed out of the ship and he was swallowed by a whale. And whilst he was in that darkness, he thought he was going to perish. What did he say? What did he do? He said, Fanada fi dhulumat, in the darknesses he called out, he said, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illa ant, subhanaka inni kuntu min al So he mentioned the kalima, La ilaha illallah. He made mention of tawheed, the greatness of Allah, his right of being worshipped. This kalima incorporates all of that, his rububiyyah, his names and attributes, his right of being worshipped. He called out with that kalima, La ilaha illallah, subhanak. Inni kuntu min al How free are you of imperfections? I was the one who was Allah and I was wrong. And then what did Allah say? He said, Fastajabna lahu. We responded to him. Wanajaynahu min al gham. And we saved him from his anxiety. Wa kadalika nunjil mu'mineen. First we saved the believers. In this, it shows you how tawheed removes calamities. Tawheed erases calamities, all types of calamities. Look at the calamity that Yunus Islam was in. How can what calamity is there where you are in the ocean, the darkness of the ocean, swallowed by a whale in the darknesses? What prospect have you got of thinking that you are going to survive? So he made this dua, and Allah Jal he responded to him, and he saved him. Now the point that we take from this is that Tawheed removes calamities. Tawheed rectifies societies. There are people present today, ignorant people, misguided people. And what's scary is that these people have spent six years in Islamic institutions like the Medina University. And they come out and they say that there's too much focus on Tawheed. That people speak as if you know, focus on Tawheed and your affairs will be put aright. As if by magic, he used the word magic. This is not logical, this is not realistic. These are the words that these people, this, this, this jahil, this individual uses. That to speak like this, to speak like what you've read, what you've heard from this ayah in the Qur'an, to speak with this type of language, that Tawheed removes calamities, that Tawheed rectifies societies, that you describe this as this is magical thinking, this, this is kufr. To, to, to speak with this type of language about Allah, His Tawheed, and the effects of Tawheed, and Allah's laws in His creation, right? to speak like this, this is the utmost jahl that, 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 that there can be. And it is also a statement of kufr as well, to speak like, to, to speak like this. To say that this is magical thinking, and that this is not logical, and this is not realistic. Right? This, is, this is the height of ignorance and foolishness to speak like this. But there are people who actually speak like this. After spending years and years and years in Islamic institutions. Where you are supposed to have studied Tawheed. And you are supposed to have studied the issues of Aqidah and so on and so forth. So this shows that uh, you know, the hearts are in between the fingers of Ar-Rahman. And that we should fear for ourselves that a person, you know, that because of a sickness in his heart and a disease in his heart, that a person, you know, his heart can be stripped of knowledge and understanding. And, you know, his heart can be turned towards another direction because of, you know, maybe there's a sickness in his heart. Maybe he's seeking fame. Maybe he's seeking fortune. Maybe he's, you know, not sincere. And then he's looking for these things. He's reading other books and, you know, books of... Uh, philosophers and activists and politicians and you know uh, and picking up things from what they are writing and then the knowledge is then erased from his heart and then he starts speaking with that nonsense and then he forgets what he knew before a person forgets what the knowledge he had before these things can happen to people and that's why uh, it is upon us to be fearful of this and in fact there's a beautiful point mentioned by uh, Sheikh Saleh al Sheikh at the end of his commentary on At-Tahawiyah uh, uh, where Imam At-Tahawi makes dua to Allah you know that he keeps us that this is our creed we stick, stick to it we abandon anyone who doesn't follow it
We ask Allah to keep his firm upon this and to keep our hearts firm upon this. He made dua after the end of the creed. And then Sheikh Saleh explains that, you know, this shows that the issues of belief, they are in the heart and they in turn affect a person's actions. And that knowledge in the heart can be erased. That what you once knew, it can be erased, it can disappear. And this shows the great importance of constantly learning. This is the point that he's making, that constantly sticking and learning the affairs of Tawheed. Constantly speaking about the affairs of Tawheed. Because look, this is the example I've just given you. How can a person, a graduate, for, spent six years in the city of Medina, can come out and speak with jahan like this? How is this fathomable <laughs> that a person speaks with such jahan? <coughs> This shows that knowledge that a person once possessed it can be taken away. Can be taken away. And so therefore, what this hadith, hadith number 11, uh, the benefit that we take from this is the greatness of La ilaha illallah, how it removes calamities, how it rectifies societies, it rectifies the person, his heart, you know. And uh, this is from the greatest virtues of the kalima La ilaha illallah. And then also we are fearful of an evil end, we are fearful of the loss of knowledge, we are fearful of the turning of our hearts. All these things a person, a servant should never ever feel secure from the plan of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because he's balanced between two things. On the one hand, he does not feel confident and secure, he fears the plan of Allah. And on, on the other hand, he does not despair. He does not despair of Allah's mercy, so he has, he doesn't have aman, which is to feel secure and safe. I will never be misguided. I know Tawheed, I understand Tawheed. How strong is my iman? I make all this ibadah, you know, this, this is, this is guru, this is now deception. You're deceiving yourself. So a person has to have fear. And at the same time, a person should not have yas, which is despair, to despair of Allah's mercy. Rather, a person has this, and a person has that. He balances them together. But this is how a believer should be. So inshallah we'll conclude with that, uh, with that as our final point. And uh, we'll continue with hadith number 12 onwards inshallah ta'ala in the next lesson. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.